All right, class, so this is a topic that's really called the common ion effect, and really what it's getting us into is the discussion of buffers. And this practice problem is really just going to start to get us into this idea of, of what's going to happen with the common ion effect um, and really get us thinking about the Chatelier's principle uh, once again. So this question, um, it's, it's sort of just getting us, getting us started. Um, and once you have a better grasp on all of this, I think it'll make a lot more sense um, what we're trying to get out of this. So let's go ahead and get started with it. The first thing says we've got a weak acid. We're given the Ka for that weak acid, 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. And it asks us to calculate the pH of a 0.2 molar solution. So this is just a simple, you know, uh, weak acid Ka ice table type problem. The first thing that I would do is write out my actual equilibrium reaction that's going to be occurring. Right, that's always going to be a good idea. This is going to be my Ka. My initial here is going to be 0 0.20 molar, 0 and 0, minus x plus x plus x. Ka is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. Now at equilibrium, I'm going to have 0 0.20 minus x. You guys know the drill. And now I can solve for x essentially. So 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth is going to equal x squared or x times x over 0 0.20 minus x. I can assume that this minus x term is negligible, right? Um, because this is such a small Ka, this x value I expect to be very small. And go and solve for x. That's going to equal 1.9 times 10 to the minus third. Indeed, it is very small. That's my concentration of H plus. So I can solve for my pH. That equals 2.72. So this first part, this is really just a, a simple weak acid type problem. Should be something that you're getting very familiar with since we've done this quite a bit now. Now in part B, part B is asking us what do we expect to happen or what will happen essentially. If I add in 0 0.20 molar NaCH3COO, and sometimes we're going to get a little confused by what this means. Essentially, what this is telling us is that we're going to have Na plus ions, just like salt would dissociate, and CH3COO minus ions. This is what this is sort of telling. This is going to be a source, essentially, of this common ion, right? We're talking about common ion effect. So this is really just the source of the common ion, the common ion CH3CO minus, I see that in my ice table here. So essentially what is going on here is that I'm going to have an initial concentration of this CH3CO minus. So my initial concentration, so calculate the pH of a 0.2 molar solution of my acetic acid, where I've got 0.2 molar CH3CO minus added in, right? That's going to be my, my you know, common ion that, that's added in. Now, again, this is going to shift a little bit to the right, minus X, plus X, and plus X, because I've got zero H plus, right? Because essentially I've got zero H plus, even though I'm starting with some initial concentration here, this is still going to be shifting to the right in order to get to equilibrium. Can finish up my ice table here. And now I can go ahead and solve again for x 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth equals x times 0 0.20 plus x and then 0 0.20 minus x. Now here we see something pretty interesting. This minus x term and this plus x term, those are both again going to be negligible. So now this 0.2 and 0.2, those will cancel out and x is just going to equal 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. It's going to equal the Ka. So if I wanted to find the pH, that's just going to be the minus log of this. The pH is going to equal in this case 4.74. So now what I want to do is sort of go back and think about what is this telling me, right? What is this telling me? So if I see this 4.74, this is a higher pH. So if we think about our original situation, so let's just sort of cover this up and think about our original situation. At equilibrium, I've got some amount of, of CH3CO minus, I've got some amount of H plus. Now, if I add in, if I, if I you know, externally add in more of this CH3CO minus, the net effect is gonna be that this reaction is gonna shift a little bit back to the left, right? That equilibrium will shift back to the left a little bit. My concentration of H plus will go down, of less H plus. If my concentration of H plus goes down, my pH should be higher, and that's in fact what we see. Now, what's a little bit confusing, I think, is that 
the way that we're solving this, rather than sort of shifting this equilibrium back to the left a little bit, the way that we have to solve it in order to make it sort of work mathematically is we have to say, well, what are our initial, and then we'll just shift it to the right a little bit. So I know that that's confusing, um, but uh, I know uh, I don't really have a good good extra alternative, you know, explanation right now off the top of my head. Um, if we tried to, let's put it this way, if we tried to put this in and then, and then shift this back to the left a little bit, the answers that we're, we'd be getting would be essentially zero. So because this x value is going to be so small in order to solve it mathematically so we actually get a value that we can sort of plug in and find a pH, we sort of have to do it this way. Um, and I know that that's not the best explanation, but uh, I think as we practice this a little bit more, um, you know, we'll, we'll get a hang of it. So. That's the explanation for this, um, and we'll talk a lot more about this in class.